Welcome back everybody. Well today, let's try to install two of these gable vents. See if we can keep the attic a little cooler. Now the fun part is gonna be getting up there to it. I think I can manage here. I was hoping my scaffold, I could put another joint on top of it and be able to stand basically right there at the bottom of the rafters and that way I could get in there and work. But it, it won't fit, the third section won't fit in there. So I think I can get up in the rafters and be able to get up there to where I can work on it. It's gonna be a little above my head so I'm gonna have to figure out some way to build me a platform. Unfortunately, I think this is gonna be the easy one. This one inside the house is gonna be the fun one because it's so high up there. But we'll just have to figure out a way to get a platform in there to work off of and see if we can get them put in. All right, here's what I'm putting in. These are from Quiet Cool, but it's supposed to be up to 2,940 CFMs and ventilate up to 4,000 feet. Now these are Bluetooth compatible, so you can link your phone up to it. That way you can operate it from anywhere in the house. But then they've got this little control unit, and I'm assuming this has a thermostat in it. So basically, if you want this, if you want your attic to get, you know, anything above 100 degrees, you can have this thing to kick on the fan to bring it back down to the temperature you want it. Now, obviously, you're not going to keep it at 70 degrees up there but we should be able to pull a lot of heat out of the attic with this and keep it from being so hot so when you're down here trying to cool it below you're not trying to overcome that you know 130 degree temperature above you in the attic space now they've got these mountain tabs here on the front of the fan so this will face the exterior so whenever i get my framing or whatever i've got to mount to up there i'll be able to bolt this thing up from that side so it's going to be drawing hot air from the attic and then blowing it outside now they come with these little baffles so when you you know if you're i guess going into an older house you can't get this mounted flush to where you don't get any air loss out the side they come with these little baffles that you can go around and seal off that way you don't get any air loss but what i'm going to do with them is i'm actually going to put them together they actually make a circle and I'm gonna tape them together and use them as a template. So I'm gonna go up there and cut my hole. Now, while we got it down here on the ground, let's plug it up and see how she blows. So this thing has got a, looks like a test button here. Let's hit it and see what happens. speed so I think once you get into the programming side of it you can adjust that speed so if it doesn't need you know full bore it can throttle itself back down to this lower speed to just you know turn the air over so anyway let's see if we can tape this together make us a template try to cut some holes and figure out how we're gonna get up in the attic to put them in That should work for a pretty decent template. See if we can go cut a hole. inside and actually got a measurement on where my framing members were down here to where I'd be just below it. I'd really like to got it on up here in the peak, but I'd had to cut through my truss and just had to redesign all that. So anyway, I'm gonna put it right here. We'll be within four foot of the top of the roof and I think it'll be fine. Now in situations like this, where the old cordless power tools come in handy. 
I've pretty well got most stuff with the battery power, but jigsaw I do not. So I've got the old tried and true here, Harbor Freight Predator. So we'll see if she'll crank. We'll cut this hole out. This little generator, I've not used it in probably three or four months, probably. And before, obviously, I tried to crank it before I got in this basket. But it pull, I pulled it three times and it fired right up. Let's get a little juice and cut this hole out. Well. well, it helps to turn the camera on. Well, we got a hole. I've got this I'll have to trim off up here at the top. But we'll get it out of the way. Then we'll be able to go in here and frame in around our hole. And then we'll be ready to stick it in there. All right, I had to get a little creative here on how to get my hole marked on my mounting block so i've got two pieces of three quarter inch osb screwed together and then i've got my hole on the outside but i just wedged this in here in between these in this truss so that way it'll set my fan out here away from the exterior just a little bit which this brace here will get cut off but then i can get me a good seal back here on a flat surface and then we'll have something solid to mount that to so I had to stick it up in there with a stick, screw it in place so it would hold for me so I could mark my line. So let's unscrew this, drop that down, and we're gonna cut a hole. All right, I got my housing in here now and got it screwed off. So I'm gonna take that zip tape and come up here and wrap over it. All right, I got it taped off. That covers all my exposed edges up. And well, if any water were to get in behind it, it can't get down and get into that exposed material. So let's go in there and try to hang a fan up. All right, let's try to get this thing hung up there without falling to our death here. I went ahead and screwed three screws around the bottom side here, so hopefully I can set it up and it'll sit on it. Well, it'll give me time to get a screw in the top. But anyway, this is probably not what you call the safest maneuver, but you gotta get it in there. Now you can hardwire these fans in or they come already with a plug so I'll just have an electrician run me an outlet up here that way we can just plug it up. And I'm gonna screw this control box up and then we'll go back outside tape it off and we're to have this one in. I'm back on the outside and I've got just a little gap here where I put those rubber pads on the mountain brackets so it sort of holds you off against the wall so i'm just taking this zip tape and tape this seam off that way it'll be seamless all the way through the fan so when that air is coming out of here it ain't got any pockets to hit it'll be a smooth transition all the way out all right that ought to have her pretty well sealed off let's see how this handy dandy technology works I've got it named on my app as house we'll tell it to go into its active smart mode I'll go inside and tell you about the technology now, a lot of times this smart stuff, in my opinion, can be more trouble than it's worth. They say just a few short steps and you'll be up and running, and then after an hour, it still won't work. But I'll have to give Quiet Cool credit. All I had to do is download their app, and then once I allowed it to connect through Bluetooth, the app found the fan, and then all I had to do was push this pair button for three seconds. It started blinking. I clicked on the fan, 
it connected and I was able to use it. Now I'll walk back in the house here to where it can connect to this fan that I've already got installed. So it's connected. So right now it's showing the attic temperature is 101 degrees, which it's probably, it's probably getting close to 90 today. So it's pretty warm, but you've got a bunch of different features. But like I said earlier, it's a two speed fan, but you can come into the settings and go into your climate settings. And I've just been playing with it a little bit, but I've got it right now set to, at low speed it would come on at 90 degrees and then high speed at 110. But you can change those for summer, winter, whatever it may be. If you want to get the humidity out of the attic, you can cut it to come on and then they've got a timer feature that you can have it run certain times. But I'll go back to the home screen. And so I'm going to tell it to enter active or activate smart mode, which at 90 degrees, it should, with it being 101, it should kick that low fan on or low speed fan on. So I'll hit the button. And you can see she kicks on low. So I was playing with it earlier and adjusted the temperatures. And so once it gets above that other range, it'll kick that high speed fan on. But even down here in the house, with it way up there in the attic, you could even fill a draft in here with that thing where it was pulling air. So the high speeds, I mean, there's no insulation in here. There's no cover on the outside. So you can hear the high speed run. The low speed, uh, very little sound coming from it, but the high speed, you can hear it. You can hear it churning, which it has to. But I think time you get the cover on the outside and then you get the insulation on the inside of the house, it'll be manageable and I don't think it'll bother you that much. Well, it's the last hole. If you'll look down at the end, you can see the fan. I already got the garage fan mounted and then got the vent hole for it, but we'll come back and put a louvered vent over this when we put the siding on. But I took some two befores and just cut some four inch blocks and sort of worked it around this radius of this hole. That way it'll beef it up a little bit. And then that'll allow me to come in here and tape this joint. That way if any water were to blow in here, we can get this taped and waterproof it some. So let's put some tape on it. We'll put a piece of plastic over it for the time being and we'll call this job done. Well, she's ready for a vent cover. I think I'll call this good. I will say the most valuable player of the day today is this big orange thing I'm standing on. I tell you what, this thing's been a lifesaver. I went ahead and taped over my holes here in case we get any blowing rain. It wouldn't blow in the house. But we got those holes done and both fans are mounted. Now I tried a little experiment the other day. As you can see, I don't have any windows and doors in this house yet. So everything's open. So when you turn that fan on, you know, it's got plenty of place down here to draw air from. But I wanted to check and see if I turned the fan on high if it would still move that piece of plastic that I have covering the hole out there. So I, it was a good calm day, the wind wasn't blowing so it wasn't moving the plastic. So I cut the fan on, on high speed and you could see it sucking a vacuum against that plastic up in the eave of the house, even with all this open space down here. So that thing will move some air, but here's the reason why I set these fans up in the attic and why I'm doing it that way. As you can see, my heat and air guy, they're roughing my duct work in now, which they've got most of the drops put in, but they like putting the trunk in. Now they've already got my air handler sitting up there and they put it on this platform that I built, which I set this platform up about 16 inches off of where my ceiling will be mounted. That way we can insulate underneath that platform and then we'll dampen some of that sound. Now, ideally, I would prefer to have my heat and air, or my air handler, rather. I'd rather have it down here on the main level. That way it'd be sitting in, you know, 70 degree temperature and it's not having to work in those extreme hot and cold temperatures. But this is, I mean, this is not a tiny house, but it's a, not a great big house either. So I didn't want to take up some of my, you know, closet space down here on the main level with a heat and air unit sitting there. And two, you've got the noise of it as well. So that's the reason I ended up putting it in the attic. 
So my main reason for putting the attic gable fans in is I hope that I can keep this attic space. They say you can pull it down to within 10 or 15 degrees above the exterior temperature. So if it's 90 degrees outside, hopefully I can keep the interior at 100, 105, and it's not sitting there working in such extreme temperatures. Now in the winter time, I don't, I'm not gonna have as many holes to the exterior because I'm doing the, the gable holes and then I'll do some soffit vents, but I don't have a ridge vent up here. So I'm not gonna let as much cold air come in. So maybe it'll keep it a little bit warmer. But the two main factors that I wanted to put those in for is I wanna try to keep a milder temperature for my units set in, in which I've got a big tall roof line so that heat's going to go on up above my unit but we're going to try to pull that heat out and then two if i can keep this attic cooler i'm not sitting down here with you know r38 insulation above me and at 130 degrees above me versus maybe 100 so hopefully i've got an easier time of keeping this cool down here well this all makes sense in my head anyway but whether or not it's right or whether it's wrong who knows but that's what i've got and that's the approach i'm going to take but hopefully it'll pull the heat out and we'll i guess once we get everything closed up and turn the unit on we'll see if it works or not but if you watch this and i appreciate it and until the next time we'll see you later